All right, it is story time. Uh, sitting next to me is the most epic amp that nobody knows about, or at least most people don't know about. Uh, it's for a couple of reasons. Uh, there's a really cool story behind this amp as far as the history of where it comes from, as far as uh, the actual, just the model. It's a, a Lab Series L5, by the way. I believe Gibson made this, or whoever owned Gibson at the time. Um, anyway, it's really cool because it's a really big piece of rock and roll and blues actual history that not a lot of people um, are aware of. So I wanted to share the story of that with you behind this amp, and then share the story of how I came to acquire this one, which is a really neat story of me and my dad. Um, first off, my favorite rock band of all time is King's X, uh, and Ty Tabor is the guitar player for King's X. And this is the amp, not this exact one, but this model, the Lab Series L5, is the amp that he recorded the first four King's X albums. And that to me, like those are some of the top albums of all time for me as far as rock goes. So that's legendary. And the cool thing about this is this is an unlikely bed, unlikely bedfellow for that type of music. You would not think that he would be playing that type of music on this amp. Uh, and kind of legend says that there are only two good sounds you can get out of this amp. One is the one that Ty Tabor got out of it. And the other one is... <laughs> I mean, they're completely unrelated. Uh, well, they're related as far as like having a really hardcore foundation in the blues, but as far as stylistically there. The other person that made this amp famous was B.B. King. And he played this amp for a long time during his career. I'm not sure exactly how long. Maybe I'll find the stats and put them up here for you. But um, this amp, I can't even remember what it was made. It may have been made in the late 70s or early 80s, something like that. I'll put that up on the screen for you too, just to let you know. But literally the only two there might be an, i think alan holdsworth may have used this for a while too i could be completely wrong about that but the two main people that made this famous were ty Tabor, king's x and then um bb king and that's the other tone that's good on this those two everything else it's really easy to make this amp, amp sound like garbage trust me um i had to like look up screenshots of their uh, settings and things like that and dial them in and those are the, pretty much the only two settings i could find that i liked on this amp but when you dial them in, they sound really awesome. And the funny thing about this, or the thing that caught me by surprise when I found out about this amp is that it is a, it is a solid state amp. And when you hear BB King's tone, you do not think solid state amp, or at least I don't. And when I hear Ty Tabor's tone for that matter, I don't think solid state amp, I think tube amp. But that just goes to show you how wrong I could be <laughs> and uh, how um, pretentious I guess I could be about, oh, I can only use a tube amp or something like that. But um, I'll tell you the story of this amp too like how I got this one. Uh, I had always wanted one just for the pure historical significance of it in my life, because I love Ty Tabor, I love his playing, I love BB King, I love both their tones. Um, so, one weekend, me and my dad had set aside a weekend to um, go to Nashville and just look at guitar stores. Just go around and look at guitar stores. If we find anything we liked, you know, within reasonable price limit, then we could get it. But uh, we ended up not finding anything that was reasonably priced enough. Everything I found was like, $3,000 and up, just ridiculous stuff, acoustics and uh, Gibsons and things like that. But, like literally right before we were about to go to the airport, we went to this pawn shop and I went in and I saw this, I was like, no freaking way. Just to have this and use it like as an end table for myself, that would have, be, have been awesome. But at the time, it actually worked too. So get it, being able to fiddle around with it and um, just experience the tones that BB King and Ty Tabor kind of dialed in when they had, um, were just getting to know the samples of really awesome opportunities. So it was uh, labeled or tagged at a hundred bucks from a pawn shop. I had $80. I offered the guy 60. He said, no, I'll take 80 for it. So I came back a couple minutes later. I was like, a fine, 80 is fine. So I got it. And as soon as I picked it up, I, I didn't regret it, but I immediately was like, oh no, this thing is heavy. It's a heavy amp, especially for a solid state amp. It's as heavy as a tube amp of this size, it's two twelves. The speakers in it, I do not like, they're pretty bad uh, in my opinion. But if you hook them up to like an external speaker cabinet, it's really fantastic. Now, it did have some problems with it when I initially bought it. It comes inside the circuit board is like foil stamp, a foil stamp circuit board, which means over time as it heats up and gets hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold, you know, 
it starts to crinkle and the connections start to wear away. So right now the power section of it does not work. The connection, it works, but the connections are all crinkled. So it, like it'll turn on, but it won't get any sound out of it. But eventually I think I'm going to, uh, <laughs> in my older retired days, I'm gonna rewire this thing point to point if that's possible. I don't even know if it is, but if it is, I would like to uh, do that just to have it working because to me it's a piece of rock and roll history i who i bought it in nashville so who knows who had this and who played it um i know a lot of pedal steel players uh use this amp too but bb king could have used it i don't know somebody he could have sold it or somebody could have stolen it from him i don't know or ty could use it who knows uh, but I, I think it's just a really cool piece of history to have and i wanted to share it with you because i thought the story of uh, you know how the tone for this got famous and then uh, of how I came by this on a pawn shop for 80 bucks. I had to carry it all the way back to the airport with me. It was a backbreaker, got it home. But yeah, I got to play for play with it uh, for about four or five years before um, the power section completely died, which is really cool. And hopefully one day it'll be back up and running again. But it is finicky, man. They're only, like I said, just a couple of places, a couple of tones that sound good, but when you dial it in, it sounds really good, especially for um, a solid state amp, I was really surprised. So let me know in the comments below, what number one, what's your favorite amp to play through? It could be one you own or you don't own, like your dream amp. And number two, what's your favorite amp to have? Because those are two different things to me. This is my favorite amp to have, just because of the historical awesomeness of it and you know how much I love BB King and Ty Tabor. Uh, my favorite amp to play that I own if I could own any amp on earth, it'd probably be a Bogner Ecstasy head. But I do really like both of these amps that I have here too, otherwise I wouldn't own them. This is a Mesa Boogie F30, super light, really easy to dial in a good heavy tone and a good clean tone. And then that Rivera knucklehead, that's really good for like very robust cleans and uh, like martial tones too. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. and. I'll see you in the next video. If uh, Don't forget to go by guitarfam.com, uh, create your complimentary account uh, to go through all the courses there. The first module of even our premium courses is completely free. So um, I'll be looking forward to seeing you on the site. And if you need help with anything specific on the guitar, go ahead and schedule a private personal one-on-one -on -one lesson with me there too on the site. The first one's complimentary. I'll be looking forward to meeting you. See ya.